episode 39. Let's do this. This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Welcome back, Architect Nation, to the Business of Architecture show. My name is Enoch Sears. I am your host. And today we will be talking with Aurora Minigello. She is the social media and marketing manager at Noveg, an online software retailer for design professionals. Now, today is the second part of our conversation with Aurora. Last week we talked about making a marketing plan through goal setting and prioritization. And this week we're going to talk about how you can extend your reach and influence through social media and online tools. Now, Aurora's done an excellent job with social media. And so that's part of the reason why I wanted to have her on the show to share her little secrets and hacks that she uses to help spread the Novedge brand. And in addition to that, before we get started here, I want to ask you a question. So today's the second episode of 2014. I just want to ask you, you know, how do you feel about the year ahead? Are things picking up where you're at? I know that where I'm at in Central California, job inquiries are definitely picking up. I can tell the economy is improving, and I have a feeling that we're going into one of those typical up cycles in the profession where suddenly the challenges switch from, you know, where are we going to get leads and where are we going to get projects to where are we going to find the right kind of people to get the projects done? How are we going to manage the process to be able to deliver the results that we like to deliver? So go ahead and visit the podcast show page. Leave me your comments about what your thoughts are for 2014. You know, how do you feel about this year? Are you optimistic? Are you still struggling? Is your firm still experiencing the tail end of the recession? You know, let me know what's going on out there. And in addition to that, I want to give a shout out to my buddy, Eric Reinholdt, who left an awesome review over on iTunes. Eric, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to hop on over there to iTunes. I appreciate that. It helps make the show better and understand what I need to do to improve the show. So if you've been listening for a while and you haven't left me a review on iTunes, head on over there. I really appreciate that. I'll give you a shout out on air if you like. If you leave your name, I'll go ahead and mention you on the air. And other than that, I just want to say I'm excited for this episode. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Let's make 2014 an awesome year. And without further ado, here's the show. All right, well, welcome back, Agile Architects. This is Enoch from Business of Architecture, and today we're going to continue our conversation with Aurora Minigello. She is the marketing manager at Noveg, uh, the top online reseller of software for design professionals. I had to look at my notes there. But they, they sell everything from Rhino to Revit to Adobe Photoshop uh, to AutoCAD, etc. And it is just a pleasure to have you back on the show, Aurora. I really enjoyed the things we talked about last week. So once again, welcome back. Thank you, Enoch. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Well, when when we first started talking about coming on the show, we discussed how you do, you're definitely involved in the social media side, but as the marketing manager, you take the much bigger picture of, of guiding Novedge's marketing decisions. And last episode, we talked a little bit about how architects, how we as architects can um, use some of those things that you do in our own businesses. So I thought in this episode, it'd be fun to jump over and talk about what you're doing in social media, sort of with the online tools and and sort of that. Sure. So um, Novage is an online company. So we have a physical presence. We're in San Francisco. You know, there's real people here, but we do business online. So um, it's very important for us to have an online presence. And I would say, you know, as we go um, on, like everybody's business will be an online business in some form or another. So you really need to have an online presence. And we all know this. Social networking um, and social networks have an, incre- you know, an, in- an incredible impact on the way we view brands and the way we interact. They're also really bad at taking all your time (laughs) and sort of like you know can be a great a big waste of time so as you remember last week i talked about having your goals and and really be focused on prioritizing and what you want so you need to have a little bit of self-discipline online um now the big question i think um given the constraint of time is which social networking platform to use and we talked about this at the Google Hangout, right? Like you bet. which ones you use and I use and so on. So, you know, you, you can all look back at that episode. But um, I would say pick one, two or three at the most platforms that you want to use. It's very important in marketing that you're consistent. 
So if you blog once and then you don't blog for two months, you might just not, don't blog, you know, just skip it. Maybe it's not for you. If you're on Facebook once a week, not enough. You need to pick platforms that you can be consistent with. And each platform is quite different. So it will depend on your personality, on where your prospective clients will see you and sort of how much time you can devote to each of these um, social networks. Absolutely. Would you recommend from your experience that they focus on one or two that they can um, devote more time to or get on more networks, even if it means spreading themselves thinner? I would focus on one or two. Now, if you got one or two down and then you feel like it gets easier, then you can add. But I think like, let's start with one or two, get those under control, learn them well, have a strategy, and then it will take less time and then you can add more. Okay. Also, at that point, you might, you know, if you learn them well and you have a strategy, you you could hire somebody to help you with them, but you know what you're doing, you know what they're doing, and, and you'll be able to direct better. So I'm always like one step at a time, sort of. <laughs> That's that. Um, so maybe I can say a little bit about my experience with each one of them. Well, let's 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 talk for a second about what's in it for me as an architect. Yeah. Why would I even get online? There's a lot of architects I know, um, peers of mine, colleagues who, for instance, might not even have websites and they've been able to function just fine in the past without having a website at all or any online presence. So yeah, let's talk that's... a little bit about what are the benefits of of being online. Let's sure. discuss that. Yes, there's there's um there's quite a few. First of all, it's gonna become less and less possible to not be online and, and still um you know keep your business going because we're so used as consumer to just go online for everything. You know, if you've ever had the experience of the internet not working at your house or at your business for like a day, you know that that you know your life comes to a standstill. So we, these are the ex, the expectations of your prospective clients is that they can Google you or they can find you online in a second. Um, the biggest thing for architects, um, in my opinion, is the visual impact of images. I mean, people want to see, we're, in, we're more and more, we're becoming more and more of a visual culture. We like to see videos and photos of everything and we read less and less and less so i think to have your pictures out there on the web is is amazing and it's the biggest factor um then there's there's two different strategies you can use now depending how much money you have to spend <laughs> and how big you are you can have a strategy of people when they search for architects in your area or a certain type of architecture um, or a certain type of architect that they find you that is a more expensive strategy to have um, and you really have to look at the competition, what they're doing and sort of like how much that would cost. The other strategy is that if you're doing effective offline networking and you're meeting people and you're speaking and you're out there in the world, then to, to then refer everybody you meet or everybody who might refer you can also send everybody to meet you online then online becomes a way to stay in touch. Okay. And in this, you know, I can, you know, in this I want to include a newsletter. So if you have a newsletter, this is another way. So, um, you know, I don't talk to all of Nouvelle. We have like thousands of followers and thousands of clients. You know, our, our social media reach is gigantic. It would be just impossible for me and for my team to keep in touch with everybody. But... Everybody follows us, you know, if somebody follows us on Facebook or Twitter or they receive our newsletter or they watch our webinars on YouTube, like every week, every hour on Twitter, every, you know, once in a while, they'll hear from us. That's a way of staying in touch. And if they want to talk and have a conversation, they can easily reach us. And that's another way of staying in touch. So there are two main strategies. You want to think if the strategy is to be found online, that costs more. And, and, you know, it, it will depend if you can do it based on your budget and the competition's budget. And then there's a strategy of I'm going to keep in touch and have a way to refer everybody I meet and everybody that hears about me, they can keep in touch. They can see what, it, what they do. And it's sort of like a, think about it as a virtual living room or town square, you know, <laughs> where you keep meeting people. Okay, so there's two ways. There's the found getting, there's two strategies, I guess. One of them would be being found online, 
In other words, people have never heard of you before and, and find you. And then the other thing was just keeping keeping in touch with people yes. online, right? Yes. And, you know, under that, you can put, under that umbrella of keeping in touch, it can be like your, your win, you know, it's sort of like virtual shop window. So, like, they can come and look at your new work if you, you know, keep updated uh, website or blog. Um, sorry, just once. <laughs> we have an open office here. So, um so it can be that it can be a way also to collaborate with people you can make friends um you know with people from all over um, the country all over the world you can collaborate online and so on so yes it's for people essentially that have already heard about you somehow or they will find you online because you're part of communities or conversations okay excellent what would you say, just playing devil's advocate here, what would you say to the architects out there who don't have a client base that is looking for architects online? For instance, there's other avenues, right? They're not going to Google search an architect. Well, how are you showing them your new projects or how are you letting them know all the new things you're doing? Um, you know, the alternative to that before and even now you know people still do is direct mail right you send a postcard you send that's really expensive like it can be very expensive it's time consuming to create um you know i receive things like that i throw them out you know i look at them i throw them out um social media or like online presence is really a way to keep showcasing what you do and uh, you wanna keep showing all your new work what you're you know collaborating on and all that Got it. Are you familiar with the term content marketing, Aurora? Yes, we do a lot of content marketing. <laughs> I, I knew you were, but I... Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, define, tell us about content marketing. Tell us what it is. Well, content marketing essentially is sharing content that is valuable to your prospective clients and your community. So this can be content that you create or it can be content that you find from other people. Um, so we use, you know, we do both here in Novedge. We create a lot of content and we also share a lot of content from other people. Um, it's, I would say, you know, this is really a way to, I think you have to think of this kind of things just like in real life. So you would go and have dinner with a group of people and you want to be able to tell some stories and then listen to their stories and then you're going to go have dinner with other people and say, oh, Enoch told me this great story. About, you know, It's the same thing with content marketing. It's just online. Okay. And tell, give me some examples of what content marketing is. For instance, tell me the ways, maybe three examples of how Noved uses content marketing. Sure. So on the original um, side, we have a webinar series. It's a weekly um, series of webinars, and we uh, invite trainers of different software that we use, and they give a one-hour class that includes a Q&A on how to use that specific software in, you know, some features, or maybe it's the new features, or for a certain profession and so on. Like the latest one we had was Bunk Speed, and they showed some features for jewelers, for example. And then people attending the webinar can ask questions and, and have them answered right there. Then we put these webinars uh, on YouTube and Vimeo for free, and they're there forever, and you can go and watch them. And so this is our way to contribute to the education of anybody online, really, because it doesn't matter. You, you know, you might not be our prospective customer at all, <laughs> and you can watch this thing. So it's really contributing to the community and to education. Um, same thing with the Google Hangout series that you participated in, and that is geared towards architects, um, and it's tips and tricks to succeed in the profession. So whether it's marketing or how to present to clients or how to get a job if you're out of school. Um, another thing that we do is that we really like to find out what other people are doing and to share things that we think are valuable to um, the people that follow us online. So, um, you know, we often share your podcasts, <laughs> the links to your podcast. Appreciate um, that. We, um, we're big fans of Bob Borson's um, Life of an Architect blog. Um, we just reshared, I think, yesterday or this morning, um, his blog post about how much it costs to become a licensed architect, and he had a whole breakdown, right? So there's a lot of things that I don't know and my team doesn't know, and why not share from people that have a great knowledge and point of view and, and might generate discussion and interest? Um, so we want to be helpful. Content marketing is about being helpful and about helping your community. I think you guys are definitely in the top 5% of content marketers out there. I mean, or maybe, you know, and that's, 
That Thank was one you. reason why I, I saw what you're doing is very effective, Roar, because you guys are just nailing the content marketing. So congratulations on that. Thank you. And I think you're doing Thank an you. excellent job. And so yeah, let's... I want, I want to just say something. I work with a team here, you know, and so again, on the on the theme of collaboration, not doing it alone. I have Barbara D'Aloisio, who's our social media person. <laughs> She's there, like, <laughs> and then Kevin Liu, who's the community manager, my marketing associate that works in front of me. And we have meetings every day discussing, brainstorming, looking at content, sharing tips, and just coming up with ideas all the time. So I want to give a big shout out, you know, to them because that's all you see me here, but I'm really, um, I'm working with a team of awesome people. Well, we definitely appreciate that, and they deserve a lot of the credit too. So it's Kevin and Barbara? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for mentioning them. Now, what is the benefit? So let's talk about the benefit that Novedge gets about all this effort into creating this content, which one, once again is educational content, or it's things like how to succeed in architecture for architects. You know, how does that benefit Novedge? Well, that's a really good question. So um, one of the things I want to say and is that um, the owners and founders of Novedge have a background in engineering. And so for them, it was really important to sort of build a community and not just like be, oh, we, you know, we sell software. Like, like they wanted to do something more, you know, with Novedge. And so a lot of this is, is we want to build community and we want to contribute to the people that make it possible for us to be out there and you know and exist as a company um the other um benefit is that people keep hearing our name and keep um it sort of it creates trust it creates a sense of like they know who we are and when you know you need software you know who you're buying your software from and you keeping in touch you know i hope <laughs> people will remember no edge when it's time um, to buy the software. So that's sort of how it works for us. And that's how it will work for you too as an architect. You want to keep in touch and you want people to think of you when they need an architect or where their friend needs one or their associate or, you know, anything like that. They want to be, oh, who is that person that sends me the newsletter or it's always posting great tips on how to hire an architect or I read, you know, and they'll say, oh, yes, it's Enoch or it's Bob or, you know, Let's talk to him. Awesome. So let me give you an example and tell me if this goes along with your understanding of content marketing that deals directly with architecture. But say, for instance, going back to my example of working with facility managers at hospitals, there's a code cycle change happening here in California. First year, we're going over to a new code. So let's just say, for instance, I sent out whether it's an email blast or a personal letter to these facility managers. And I said, hey, by the way, I'm hosting a webinar, you know, in two weeks on the code changes that are going to affect hospitals. And I'd love for you to come on the webinar and I'm going to talk about all the changes that you can expect. Is that a good example of a content marketing? Yes, that's a great example of it. Um, as a marketer, I, you know, I really like um, HubSpot. It's a blog for marketers and what they create is actually like um, this software for you to do marketing. Okay. So I am their target market, even if I don't have their software, I'm the target market. And I read their blog all the time because all they do is like they reshare and repackage information of all the changes on all social media's marketing practices, everything I'm interested in. So I know if I go to HubSpot, like they have a summary of what I would find in 10 different places. So it's really useful. So content marketing needs to be useful and interesting to the people you you want to sell to and you want to connect with. Wow. I, I just had this, this, my mind started spinning because have you ever been in front of a mirror and a mirror is also behind you and you look in that mirror and you see yourself yes. like affinity times? <laughs> so it's kind of weird because we're talking about content marketing and we're producing content marketing and, right. <laughs> and you're talking about another person that produces yes. content marketing. Oh, it's just... Yes. It's very meta, all of this. Very, very meta. So I'm sorry, <laughs> go on. <laughs> but that's, you know... that. Perfect. I mean, exactly. So, um, you know, you might, or another way to think about it is that if you help your client get clients, um, that that's a way to be helpful. Yeah. Okay. So if you help you, so, um, or in your case, if you help your client understand better how they can deal with their problems of building, you know, or restoring or anything, then you're helping them and they will trust you and will come back to you for more. And again, that's where it's important not to lie. <laughs> 
because you really want to generate trust and trust is never built on lie and manipulation it's always built about sharing things you're really knowledgeable about and that can be really helpful awesome awesome that is okay so there's content marketing folks and that was um <laughs> Let's talk about platforms and about different – so let's jump in now that we got that out of the way, sort of like why we would do it. Let's talk a little bit about the different platforms and – Okay. Um, so we can start with Facebook. Um, the, well, let me take a step back. So you really need to figure out where your prospective clients are going to be, okay? Either where they're going to be because they're there already – looking for people or where you can direct them that they will take the time to go and go back to. Okay, so, so just just to pause for a second. So for sure. instance, my facility manager's example, they're not on Facebook, they're not on Google+. Yeah. It would probably be for them, it would be email or links back to my website. In other words, maybe webinars and, and reports and newsletters I would send for a residential yeah. architect. Oh, go on. No, I was going to say yes for, you know, in your case, uh, an email newsletter, if they would subscribe and you can ask them when you meet them, you say, oh, I send this email newsletter, you know, once a month or once a week or however often, like, would you mind if I added you to it? You know, the webinar, I think, is a great idea because that way, and especially if it's recorded and then you leave it online. So if they're not available, they can go back and look at it. Um, and then the website, definitely, because people will go back to your website and look at it and pass it along. Uh, for residential architects, Facebook uh, might be really, really effective because everybody's on Facebook. I, okay, I have one friend that's not on Facebook. <laughs> and everybody's on Facebook, right? And everybody's on Facebook every day. Like, okay, not everybody, but a lot of people are on Facebook every day. So they're already hanging out on Facebook and they're hanging out in their personal life so that could be a really good way the drawback to Facebook is that um, if you really want a good way to an effective way to use it you do have to use their ads if you don't promote the post only a small percentage of the people um, who like your page are going to see um, are going to see your your posts so, so just to describe that for our listeners what that means is that when you share a link on Facebook Facebook is only going to send that to say maybe 15% of the people who liked your page and you can pay yes. to get it exposed to maybe 50 or 80% of the people. Is that right? Yes. Yes. It's not very expensive. Um, so that's where you need to figure out the budget and, you know, the return on investment. And that's where keeping track of how people find you and all that, you know, it's very important. Um, but that's ex essentially the point of Facebook. So Facebook, of course, we're talking here about Facebook business pages. Um, your private Facebook and your private profile, it's, it's a different story. Now, let me say a little bit what I think about that. Um, you want to have a business page for your company. Um, you don't want to treat your private Facebook profile as if it's 100% private. Even if all your settings are completely private, I never consider anything I put online as private because anybody can take a screenshot <laughs> and send it over email. You know, Facebook things mm -hmm. change, settings yep. change all the time. Okay, so be very careful. So remember when I said, especially if you're a small um, practitioner, you always want to let everybody know what you're up to. So let's say you have a Facebook business page and, and you post there, you know, every day. Well, once every two weeks or the one time that you work on a great project and you have great pictures, share that with your friends on your personal profile. Okay, let them know what you're up to. Okay, you never know who they know, what they might say. Okay, so... You need to you you need to have your Facebook private persona private profile separate completely separate than your Facebook um, business page, but every once in a while reshare from business to personal. Okay, so that your network knows what you're up to. Um, the big the big tip on all the social media platform is that visual content is king. People like images, so. You know, learn how to use your camera phone, <laughs> get a professional photographer, um, you know, just be knowledgeable about copyright, put images out there. People like that a lot. Okay. So that talked about Facebook. Um, okay. So then let's talk about uh, Twitter. So um, Twitter is very interesting um, because it's all public. Yes, there are some, you know, direct messages. There are some ways to keep your 
tweets private, but essentially it's public and you can approach anybody and see any everybody's conversation. So while on Facebook, you need to ask your prospective clients to like your page and you have to, um, you know, they have to come to you. And it's, it's really weird if you friend somebody on Facebook that you don't know in real life. On t Twitter, it's the opposite, where it's really built so people can connect um, with people that have the same interests. So I find that if you want to connect with new, um, with new colleagues or complementary businesses or find content or anything, that is a great way to go about it. So the, um, the sort of drawback with Twitter is that it, is, uh, it can be very overwhelming. It's very much in the moment. It's little texts and there's a lot going on at all times. So you need a third party application to keep track of only the tweets that you're interested in from the people you're interested in. So you can use Hootsuite or TweetDeck. They are free. Um, Hootsuite is free until a certain point and you know, even when you pay, it's, it's fairly inexpensive. And that way you can create lists. So I have a list, for example, with Enoch and Evan Troxel and Neil Pan and Jeff Stafford and um, if you, check the Novage blog, we have a list of, you know, the 10 resources for architects. And so I have a list on Twitter, for example, with the people that I find have a consistent, um, that this post consistently good content. And so I want to make sure I don't miss their tweets. Um, I, you know, you can have list of, uh, you can create a list on Hootsuite based on hashtags. So what are hashtags? Hashtags are ways that people uh, mark topics on their tweets so you know there's um there's actually a really great website on this let me see if i can find the name it's called tagdefdef.com and i don't know if you use it um you know do you use it no that's a new one like for me i'm learning something this is great and you can check there the meaning of any hashtag and you can register hashtags. And so, um, you know, don't come up with your own hashtags without checking first on Twitter or on tagdaf.com that is already, you know, whether that hashtag is already out there because <laughs> you might be out there and mean something completely different. So you want to check. And then, um, and then if you add hashtags to your tweets, people can look for them. They can look for a topic and then they can see all the, tweets on that topic. So uh, you can create uh, a list in Hootsuite, for example, just always looking at a certain hashtag topic. Okay, right. So let's say that you use, I don't know, you use AutoCAD and you want to see what people are talking about AutoCAD, you can have a uh, hashtag AutoCAD and then every time somebody posts something marked with that, you will see it appear in your list. Um, what else about, twi well, both Twitter and Facebook, all the social networking uh, platform tag people. So there's always a way to tag people, which means to mention people in your post so that anybody looking at that can click and be referred to this person or, um, and, and that person will get a notification that they've been mentioned. It's very important. It's sort of like going back to our metaphor of the dinner party, you know. <laughs> so, you know, Enoch says a great story and I repeat it. I really want to give him credit. I want to say like, oh, he said this great story, right? On social network, you not only can give credit, you can post a link so that he knows he's being given credit and everybody can go and read the original one or connect with him if they think he might have some other great stories, right? So um, that's very important to always keep in mind um, the other people. And, um, and the other thing is, don't just post your content, share other people's content, respond to other people, have a conversation, you know, again, just like the real life, uh, in real life. Have you ever had a dinner with somebody who the entire dinner just talked? I actually had one time that experience. It, it was, I mean, you know, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not good. <laughs> you don't want to do the same thing um, on social media. Um, and one last thing that a lot of people don't know about Twitter is that actually posting images on Twitter increases um, in your interaction and your visibility and the success of your tweet a lot. So um, you wouldn't think about it because, you know, we don't think of Twitter as a visual um, platform, but it is actually very important to post images there as well. That's awesome. 
So um, just, maybe, I, I just want to mention yes. to those who are listening, I'm sure most people, quite honestly, on this podcast know what a hashtag is. If you don't, don't feel, you know, don't feel out in the out of the outer circle. Um, it just means that you put a pound symbol in front of the topic. So or the number symbol or the pound symbol. It's the, it's called a hash a hash mark. And so that's what that's sort of how you define hashtags. Thank you. Yes. I you know, I'm all day long on this <laughs> and then sometimes I forget. Yeah. Um so the other um, social network that I really like is Google+. Plus. Um, Google+, Plus is still new, and what I find is that less people are on it. So there isn't as much of a, you know, on Facebook, you can count that everybody is on it. On Twitter, there's there's very avid user, and a lot of people are on it. But Google+, Plus, you know, is still sort of like growing. Um, what I find that is positive about this is that people on it are mostly on it very focused on what they want to talk about. And especially for architects, is it's very good. There's a lot of architects, design professionals there having conversations that are um, about what they do and, and not a lot of other sort of, you know, what I ate today and all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you're looking for a social network to find like-minded professionals to connect with, um, Google Plus is a good one. Uh, I mentioned before, Just Stafford has a great community for architects called uh, Big Time Small Firm, and uh, it's there on Google+, Plus. you can apply to be part of it, um, and um, there's other communities. I'm Honestly, I'm exploring as well all the potentials. Um, a few things about um, Google+, Plus. let me think. Um, one one big thing is the hashtag. They're important there as well. So they work the same way as with Twitter. You can mark um, topics and Facebook has them too as well now. So, you know, all the social um, networks have them. Um, and the other thing is they, uh, Google Plus has a great uh, way of showing content. So your videos, your pictures really, I think it's, I don't know, it's my favorite way to look at pictures and videos. They, they show up really nicely. So especially, again, for visual um, professionals, that's really important. And then um, the last thing is that it works with circles. So instead of um, sort of fans, you put people in circles and you can have different circles and they put you in circles and they can have different circles. What are circles? Um, circles are essentially groups of people. So, um, or categories, if you want to call it. So you follow somebody, which means, um, you know, you're going to see what they decide to share. Uh, if they don't follow you back, then you'll see what they decide to share publicly. If they follow you, then they might decide to just show something with, to just share something with you. Um, and you divide the people you follow in categories. Like, so you can have one for friends, you can have one for family, you can have one for, you know, I don't know social media marketers you like, architects you like, you know, uh, past clients, you can decide. And people can do that too, you know. Um, the, the thing about circles is that they're sort of in between Twitter and, and Facebook. So Facebook, you cannot add people, okay? Unless you know them, your friends and all that, you cannot add them. And you certainly cannot add them to your page. They, they have to like your page on their own. On Twitter, you can follow anyone you want. Twitter is completely, you know, it's so public and out there. And the whole idea is like, just follow anybody you want. It doesn't matter. So the Google Plus circles are kind of in between. It's totally okay for you to add to the circle somebody you don't know. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna see and there's an, you know, they're gonna wonder where they found. It's not quite like Twitter, everything goes. But it's sort of like good medium again to start following people you don't know and connecting that way. Excellent, excellent. Any other any other things about Google Plus that we need to know about? Any intricacies about how to use it successfully? Um. If, well, so Google Plus is a little bit more. Um, when you put things publicly, not a lot of people might see them. So it's very important you build your circles and then people follow you. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have a strategy around that. And and um, yeah, they don't. Um, it's not like Twitter where, you know, you put it out there. It, you have to have a bit of a strategy over people following you and you following people and, and make sure you share that way and increase those numbers in your circles. Um, the great thing we like at Nubedge about um, Google+, Plus, it's, it's the Google Hangout on air. 
feature. Um, and so we have our series, How to Succeed in Architecture, and you basically can set up, uh, you know, it's a multiple video call with up to 10 people and have a live talk show that gets recorded and broadcast on YouTube simultaneously. And when we do our own, we set up an event page where the video streams and people can comment and ask questions right um, Right, right there, real time. Um, so I really like that, and it might be a great um, reason to join Google Plus as an individual, just to be able to watch Google Hangouts on air. Excellent. Any other social platforms, Aurora, that you'd like to talk There's about? There's a ton, but <laughs> that you would like to tell us about that we need to know about. <clears throat> well, I think you know I want to talk about blogging, um, if it's okay for a little bit. Um, so. One blog that's really great, I mentioned uh, Bob Borson, um, Life of an Architect. There is another blog that's really great. That's the Build blog, Build LLC. I think they're in Seattle, and they have an, a great output. Um, there's, of course, our blog, the Novage blog. Uh, we blog multiple times a week. There's Evan Troxel. Um, he has a great blog as well. Um, so it's important. Blogging is sort of like a social uh, media platform as well, and you want to create content for your blog and then broadcast it in all the other avenues, right? Um, the big thing about it is that you have to be committed to it and, and you have to have a routine. So I would say, well, statistically, we know that blogging twice a week, it's much more effective than blogging once a week. And less than once a week, just forget it don't blog <laughs> you know do something else um so if you like to write or if you're not like a big writer you can find ways to just share pictures uh, from what you do and you want to find your own voice so you want to try that you've done it before that appeals to you uh, blogging is a great way to share content create content and stay in touch with um, colleagues clients everybody so it's almost like blogging actually makes the backbone of your social media strategy. If you can produce the content on there and then spread it out and share things and you're doing this other social media, is that a good way to describe blogging from your perspective? It could be one. It could be one. Yeah, it depends. You know, the, the backbone can be a number of things. And so you can have a backbone just based on Twitter and you can be really heavy on Twitter and that can be the backbone of your social media strategy. But um, another way could be to um, to have a blog. So that again, you know, I feel like it depends how much you like writing or how much you want to tackle that and if that appeals to you. Um, I'm a big fan of pushing yourself out of the comfort zone a little bit all the time. But also, you know, if there's something else you're passionate about and then there's something you're not passionate about, go with the passion if, if you think it's going to be as effective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That, that's a better use of your time. Excellent. Are there any other resources besides HubSpot, which you mentioned previously, that you can send people to that have impacted you in terms of social media and online tools? Yeah, that's a great um, question. So I like HubSpot. I like Seth Godin. Um, and then I follow you know, everybody else that is listed, including you. And I learn all the time by seeing what you guys do. Um, so um, Evan Troxel, Neil Pan, and Cormac Phelan of the Archispeak podcast. They do a great job. They're all on Twitter and they have very different personalities and you can really, you know, learn how everybody expresses themselves and how personal versus how professional you can be. Uh, Bob Borson is great and he really has a great way of going about it. Jeff Stafford had a whole uh, Google Hangout that I participated in on how to use Google+. Plus. Um, so, if I find somebody that is interesting, I start following them and I and I look at their updates and I sort of pick up things all over the place. And then I mentioned I have my own uh, marketing group and my own team here, so that's also a source of constant um, update and what we learn and what we try. Excellent, excellent. I'll add to the list um, other people and if, I, if we're forgetting you, you can just send me an email, but I know there's... Um... Um, you check out Jeff Jeff Eccles on um, on Twitter, yeah. architect you. of the internet, and then uh, my buddy uh, Mark LePage at Entrepreneur Architect has some interesting resources for smaller firms. So there's starting to be this good community of architects that are doing it, and those would be good to look at for examples. How about any any books about social media or online tools that you were impactful? Yeah, I have to say I've learned everything 
on social media it's it's very social media changes so fast that it's harder to learn that from books yeah. mm -hmm. and the sort of the mentality around it is that people share what they learn on social media so if you go on google plus for example i forgot what the hashtag is but you can do a quick search and there's like communities on on learning how to use google plus so um it's it's very it's very fast paced you really want to keep on top of it every day every week things change very fast excellent thanks Aurora. any closing thoughts on social media and online tools for marketing be focused really look at those marketing goals and your metrics and the results you're getting and you know make sure that you're using social media in a way that is consistent with your goals because i'm telling you for experience from experience you can spend eight hours on facebook a day and achieve absolutely nothing so you want to be very very focused you brought up something that i just want to talk about before we we end the interview aurora if that's all right yeah. And that is time management and social media. What tips do you have for architects who are very busy running their own businesses or involved in their jobs? How to get the most out of social media? Do you have any tips for that while still minimizing the time? Yeah. So it depends on your personality. So first of all, you need to know yourself and be very realistic on what you can handle and not handle. I know yeah. people that have, there are some apps and things for your computer where you can literally like uh, prevent um, certain things to pop up open and you have to put password to, you know, it makes it hard for you to just like click on Facebook and look at things. So that might be something that works for you. Another technique is to allow yourself to be on social media or email only a certain times during the day and limit that. Um, for me, what I find is that I like to take breaks more often. Um, so I try to sort of like be focused on something for an hour, an hour and a half. And then I allow myself 10 minutes, you know, sort of doing something else. And then I get back an hour, an hour and a half. And then maybe like, you know, I take a little break. And that works better for my personality. Um, so you have to know yourself and then experiment with a couple of these tips and see what works for you. Excellent. Well, Aurora Minigelo, thank you so much for being on the Business of Architecture show. I've gotten a lot out of this conversation. <laughs> thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. I love your show, Enoch. So it's great. Great to be here. Yeah, now we finally got you on it. <laughs> That's how you got me back. <laughs> yeah, so a warning to all those other viewers out here. Be careful what you do. You might end up, you, you might end up with your, your butt in the seat on the other end of the camera, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Aurora, we'll talk soon. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank bye bye. You. Bye. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you as an architect can raise your fees, land the projects you love to work on, and get the time in your day back, join the members only Business of Architecture Insider list for free by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash free. Enter your best email address there, and I will send you instant access to free resources, including my book, Social Media for Architects. If you'd like to discuss a thought or insight from today's show, visit businessofarchitecture.com slash podcast. On that page, you'll also find my notes from today's show and the action items I took away from our conversation. Until next week, keep rocking and go conquer the world. views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help architects conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, do it anyway.